Hello there. We are happy to be with you once again. I hope you had a great time during the week. Let's share a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for today. We pray that you help us understand your word and keep it in our heart daily. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you are ready for our third lesson on Elijah. Do you remember lesson one? My most exciting moment was when Elijah was fed by the ravens. Hey, truth be told, God can do great things. Do you also remember the priest of Baal in lesson two, who called on their God for many hours and had no response? That was a sure confidence moment for Elijah as the fire of God fell on the altar when Elijah called on our God. The Lord is the only one God. The Lord is patient. That is what we'll gather in lesson three. But before then, let's take our memory verse as we prepare our hearts to understand why Elijah ran from Queen Jezebel. Please let's open our Bible to the book of Psalm. Psalm 145, verse eight. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Gracious? Yes, he's gracious, meaning he makes his sun shine on everybody, both those who believe in him and those who don't believe in him. God cares for us dearly. That is why he sent his only son to come into the world and to die on the cross for our punishments for sin. That is why we call him compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love, meaning God is very patient with us and he shows us his love each day. That is why I invite you to come to God through Jesus now. Now let's rehearse our memory verse together. Psalm 145 verse eight. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. Let's try it again. Psalm 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, slow to anger and rich in love and rich in love. Psalm 145 verse eight, amen. Do well to recite this verse every day to strengthen your Christian faith. Now to our song time, relax and enjoy.
the song. We continue with our series on Elijah and in today's lesson we are going to see how God was patient and kind to him. As we get ready with our Bibles, notebooks, pens or pencils, let's also get our hearts ready so that God can talk to us. Do you sometimes feel like giving up? Have you ever told God you are tired and cannot go on? Maybe there's this person who likes to bully you or always wants to pick a fight with you simply because you're a child of God. And because of that, you have become tired of doing good or telling others about Jesus. Well, my dear friend, you are not alone in this, so do not be troubled. Even Elijah, the mighty prophet of God at one point, was very discouraged when the wicked Queen Jezebel sent her servant to give him a dreadful message. In the message, she said, Elijah, by this time tomorrow, you'll be dead. But why did she say that? Why did she want him dead? She was very angry and wanted him dead because King Ahab had gone to tell her that Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. But what Jezebel did not know was that if God did not permit her, she could do no harm to Elijah. Elijah must have forgotten this too, because when he received the dreadful message, he became very frightened and ran away for his life. He traveled to Judah and then into the wilderness. After traveling a long distance, he was so tired he sat under a tree to rest. He thought the people of Israel, after witnessing the mighty miracle God had performed at Mount Carmel, will stop worshiping Baal and worship the true God of Israel. But he thought wrong. He was so discouraged that he prayed, oh God, please let me die. Elijah's prayer at that moment showed that he did not trust God. Hmm. But how do you think God reacted to that prayer? Do you think he was angry and said, Elijah, you are no more my servant? Definitely not. God understood how tired and discouraged Elijah was. So he was very patient and kind to him. Can we also decide to be patient and kind to the people in our lives who keep coming to ask for help, money, or even food? We mustn't say to them, go away from me, I will no longer help you. It will surprise you what God did for Elijah. Instead, he sent an angel to take care of Elijah 
when he finally fell asleep under the tree, the angel woke him up and said, Elijah, eat. Elijah found a piece of cake and a jug of water. He ate, drank, and went back to sleep. After a while, the angel woke him up again and said, Elijah, eat some more. Elijah ate and went back to sleep again. Doesn't this tell us how loving and caring God is? If you're a child of God, always remember God loves and cares for you very much, even when you sin. But even if you are not a child of God, know that God still loves and cares for you very much. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 8, that God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us when we were still sinners. So after Elijah had eaten and rested, he felt much better and traveled for 40 days and nights till he arrived at Mount Horeb, where he spent the night in a cave. God then spoke to him and asked what he was doing there. He responded, I have worked very hard for the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel, they have turned away from God and killed all his prophets. I am the only one left. Once again, God was patient with Elijah. As a child of God, do not forget to thank him for being patient and kind with you. Even when you sin, he's patient and he will forgive you. We learn in Psalm 145, verse 8, that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. And it is the same God who spoke to Elijah and told him to go and stand on top of the mountain because he was about to pass by. Elijah did as he was told and stood on top of the mountain. Then a strong wind blew and broke pieces of rock from the mountain, but God was not in the wind. After that, an earthquake shook the mountain, but God was not in the earthquake. Then came a fire, but God was not in that either. God did all that to show Elijah that he was all powerful and in control of the universe. Finally, a still small voice came. Immediately, Elijah covered his face with a robe because he knew then that the Lord was speaking to him. God spoke gently and kindly and asked again, Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah gave the same answer as before. He explained that the people of Israel had killed all the prophets of God and he was the only one left. Elijah had run away from Jezebel and gone to Mount Horeb without asking God, but God was still patient and kind to him. Have you been disobedient as a child of God? Know that God is still patient and kind. He is waiting for you to confess your sins so that he will forgive you. Even if you are not a child of God, know that God is still patient and kind. He is waiting for you to come to him through Jesus Christ. At the end of the lesson, Auntie Sarah will give you an opportunity to ask Jesus to be your savior. After hearing his responses, God told Elijah to go back to where he had come from and choose someone else to be king of Israel in place of Ahab. He also told him to look for a young man called Elisha and anoint him to be the next prophet of Israel. Then God told Elijah something wonderful. He told him that in Israel, there are still 7,000 prophets who are still faithful to him and do not worship Baal. That must have made Elijah very happy. Here he was thinking he was the only one left, but God was cheering him up. Elijah did exactly as God told him. Do you notice that 
God was still willing to allow Elijah to work for him, even though he ran away. This tells us that God is patient and kind. He's patient with you and me. He's kind to all of us, and he's willing to forgive us when we confess our sins. Now, let's go to Auntie Sarah for something exciting. After hearing our lesson on Elijah, as a child of God, I want to prompt you that when you feel sad or discouraged, don't think that God is against you. Tell him how you feel and remember he'll be patient with you also. Pray to God and ask him to help you to be patient with others too. God will never give up on us. He loves us so much. That is why he's always patient with us. His desire is for us to be like Jesus. On the other hand, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, know that God has been patient with you too. But his patience will not last forever if you remain sinful. Please say this prayer after me if you would like to come to God through Jesus now. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for being patient with me all the times I even disobeyed you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I accept today that you'll be my Lord and personal savior. In Jesus' name, I will pray with thanksgiving. Amen. If you have said this prayer with me, know that you are now a child of God. Remember to pray always and to read your Bible every day. We have now come to the end of our lesson. We hope to see you next time. Until then, it's bye for now. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Let's continue to remind ourselves of the COVID-19 protocols. Wear a face mask when you step out of the house. And always remember to ensure physical distancing. If you want to use a face shield, add a face mask in for better protection. Using only a face shield is not safe. A face mask should cover your nose, mouth and chin. Do not make it a mouth or a chin mask. Do not take off your mask if you have to talk with someone. Go ahead and speak through the mask. Whenever you feel unwell, inform your parents, guardians or an adult close by so that you can seek prompt medical attention. Always wash your hands with soap and a clean running water for at least 20 seconds. In the absence of soap and water, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer for your hands. Avoid touching your mouth, your eyes, and your nose. If you have to, please wash your hands properly before you do so. Cough and sneeze into a clean tissue. <coughs> and dispose it immediately after using to a clothes bin. In the absence of a clean tissue, use your flexed elbow when coughing or sneezing. <coughs> Pray for good health daily, and by God's grace, we'll conquer this faceless virus together. For with God, all things are possible.